There. I almost forgot to turn the volume on. Hopefully you can hear me now. And hello, everybody. I think I see, is that a new person here? Is Lisa's Quilting Corner a new person or is that our other Lisa? So hello, everybody. So it is great to see you this Thursday, April 13th. And I don't have my taxes done yet. <laughs> I always tell you my failings, but I'm working on them, but they're acting up. I hate doing taxes. I told Mark that I would like to just throw them in the trash can and say, IRS, come get me. <laughs> but I'm going to get them done. Luckily, we have until Monday to get them done. But hello, everybody. I bet you some of you got yours done a while back. Oh, that's wonderful. Marsha is here. First person here. Hi, Marsha, sweetheart. Cheryl Hogan. Meltem is here from Turkey. Hi, pumpkin. Ah, uh, and it and it's it's a when I call you pumpkin, that's a southern nickname for honey or sweetheart. So it's a good thing. I just wanted you to know. <laughs> what did I hear the other day? In Turkey, if you want to say something, put someone down, say something rude, you tell them that they are pudding. Does that sound right? I heard this the other day. I heard it the other day, and I was trying to remember exactly. It's something like, they're your pudding, or I think it was Pudding is as close as I can come to it. But I thought that was so cute. You know, in France, they call you their petit chou, which is their little cabbage. And so you just never know. You know, <laughs> you never know. I one time um, had a friend that was from Tehran. And back before, this shows how old I am. Back before when the Shah was still in um, control and I told him I was going to name my dog after him because I thought he had a cool name he was so offended so be careful with different cultures and find out what are good things and what are bad things because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings but anyway so let's see who else is here so Debbie's here Oh, uh, Polly is here. Oh, this is so good to see you. Pat Fry is here. Hi, sweetie. Betty Middleton's here. Love your quilt, girlfriend. Oh, this is wonderful. Turkey is trying to heal its wounds. Istanbul is rainy. This is good for us. The dams are full. Good, 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 good. Oh, I love how you write turkey. That's really interesting. Um... Rain is great for crocheting. Is that what? <laughs> oh, the yarns. Ah, oh, that is so, yes. Let's see. Um, our Marsha is such a good crocheter. She enjoys her crocheting. So, let me see where I, so Lisa's Quilting Corner. It's regular, Lisa. Oh, that's cool. Lisa, if you ever end up starting a uh, YouTube, you got to let us know so we can all support you with it. I just, all, when I see an official name, I always want to make sure. But that's our regular Lisa. That's our wonderful Lisa. Oh, Mitty is here. Hi, Mitty. Aw. Okay, let me see. Debbie and Denise is here. Hi, Denise, sweetheart. It is so good to see all of you people. Diana B is here. Hi, honey. How How's everything going with you? So, because I think there was a problem. Was it your husband was ill? It was somebody. I've forgotten now, and I do apologize, but know that I know when to keep you close to my heart, sweetie. All right. All the new sayings with uh, each generation. Yes. I had a woman 
I, when my kids were growing up, grow, growing up every year in the, where we live, they had what's called Christmas in April. And you would volunteer to go in and help fix up an elderly or a um, underprivileged or a disabled person's house. And I loved it. I looked forward to it every year. And I had a woman one time, I would go out and buy plants for their garden on my own just because I thought, well, we're fixing up the house, but I want to ha leave them something pretty to look at. So I brought her real pretty azaleas that were blooming. And she and I got talking. We had such a good day together. And she told me that she wanted to wrap me in cotton wool and put me in an egg. <laughs> Isn't that the cutest? So I knew that that meant that I was precious and she wanted to, you know, take good care of me. I love that. So let's see. Marsha, Marsha loves quilts too. That's right. D don't just pigeonhole her with crochet. She's a multi-interest, multi-curious woman. So hello, everybody. You did not sleep. You will prepare a meal for your family soon. You stopped eating at 4.48 a.m. Istanbul time. How long does Ramadan last? I am just was curious. Yeah, oh, good egg. You're right, Denise. Wasn't that sweet? Well, thank you very much. It, I love flowers as well as my quilting. Y'all won't believe this, but at 7 o'clock, just a half an hour ago, I went upstairs, took my shower, washed my hair, blow-dried it, came down, put the hot curlers in it. I was running. <laughs> so, 30 days. I, I'm impressed. That is quite a devotion. Wow. Wow, that, that's pretty good. That's a long time to stay in that. I guess the best thing is to call it devotion. That's really something. I'm impressed. Good job. So, oh, wow. Um, you're all doing good now. We started the keto diet. Oh, that's it. Yes, he's off of his diabetic medicine. You know what? If I would follow something like that, my doctor would be happy with me. I'm lucky I just do the metformin, but that is a good, good thing. Barbara Smith is here too. Hello, everybody. So you have the last six days left of Ramadan. Wow. Now, do you pray like four or five times a day facing west, I think, to Mecca. I've tried different times to learn different things about different faiths because I, I just find that they're fascinating and well worth everybody to understand and know. So that's great. All right. Yeah, I think that I remember that Muslims get the call to prayer and that's, that's very important. Okay, well, I have all of my, I have all of my color blocking done, like I promised you I would, just in the nick of time. I have been every, I started Monday, Mark knows I hate doing taxes, and so he says, well, just do a little bit a day. So Monday, I got gathered up all the stuff I collect during the year. And then I um, put that on the table I work at, the desk I work at. And so I found all the stuff, set that on the table Monday. Easy job. <laughs> well, I did also separate it into bundles. What is, what are the donations I give to places, what medical bills, that house interest, that kind of stuff. Then Tuesday, I started working on it, got so frustrated. Then Wednesday, 
I'm going to try to finish it tonight. But you know what? When you pay for a tax service like TurboTax, you do it online. They ask you questions that you have no idea what they're really trying to say. So last night they have this cutesy little stuff, which I don't care about. Just help me get my taxes done because you spend like $140 just doing TurboTax with no live person, for goodness sake. So they said, oh, let's check in and see how you're doing. And I clicked the not happy face. And they said, oh, why? And I said, because I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, well, we'll pass your opinion along. I thought, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, thank Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Malcolm. I appreciate that so much. Yeah, they have to fast during daylight hours, I think. Whew. That would be hard to do. I tell you, I used to, I tried being Catholic for five minutes and I would try to give something, something up for Lent and it, it didn't work with me. The only good time that I did do something good by giving up something for Lent is I gave up thinking and saying bad things about people, gossiping, you know, and that did me some good. So here we go. Let's see what I have. But giving up chocolate, I mean, it's that's a hardship, but I'm not sure if it makes you a better person. So here we go. All right, get my stuff out of the way. I have lost my little glue bottle tip. And until I find it, I guess this sewing machine needle is going to have to try to block it up. Oh, another thing is when we finish Sunday's show, I am so sorry that it started. In fact, now I've lost, I've lost the chat again. I think, I think it is when I move the mouse. Now, how do I get, oh, this is frustrating. Let me see if I can figure out how to get the chat back. I think it is. It's when I move the mouse because I made sure that I had the camera, everything solid. But now what do I do? No, not that. This is very frustrating. Um, hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is probably use my old mouse when I come in here because this is very frustrating. Maybe if, it, let me see if there is a way that I can minimize the screen. Let me see. Mm -mm -mm. Just so you know, darling. Yes. You are very much still live and on. Right. I know you just can't see the chat. No. But you're on. So I, I don't know what to do. Normally, it's got something over here, and it did happen when I moved my mouse. All I did was pick it up and move it. So, a button got touched. Well, why don't you just finish this show, and then we'll figure it out for next time. Yes, I apologize, everybody. I'm trying to push buttons on here to see. Uh, oh, well. I'm not going to be able to talk with you. But I am going to finish this show, and so I'll just talk, and then hopefully later I can read back. And I miss what you say because you you make this show. I mean, you are the, such a huge part of it. But hopefully it'll show up later, and I will um, I'll watch it and read what you said. Lately, these allergies 
oh my goodness, pollen is terrible. So here is the quilt. What? I've gotten all the color blocking done. So I always like to look around to see what do you see. And I'll show you a lot of things are not going to really show up yet until a lot of things are not going to show up yet until we start doing some of our until we start doing some of the thread painting and all of that. Now. Oh, you do you have the he brought down his computer so I can see the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Oh, yay. I don't think I put it. Yeah, I don't know if I can put it, how close I can put it. Oh, this is so wonderful. Way, so I can look over and see you. Oh, wow. His is a few minutes behind. So I see myself and then let me see where I can put this so that I can see you. This is so exciting. That was very kind of him because he loves going through YouTube and finding different exciting things to watch. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, Milton, thank you for te for telling us all of this. This is wonderful. Oh, I love it. Okay. So what I did, this is nice now. I don't feel like I'm all by myself. So I put some clouds in the sky and tried to kind of, um, you know, right now, when you do color blocking, unless you want to put in a zillion shades of sky, you don't have it meld, look smooth. But we will do that with ink tents and thread painting. So right now it's like color, 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 but that's okay. Believe it or not, I found a picture of what the woodland waterfall looked like when I had just color blocked it. It was like, okay, but it, we brought it to life with the thread painting and ink tents, and that's what we're going to do here. Now, you can see that I did my fencing. So that's my sand fence, and, and right now I wanted to do it two different colors because this side is going to have the sunrise affecting it where this is in the shade. Now, it, it's obvious that one's gray and one's tan, but when we do our thread painting and when we do our ink tents, I will make sure to kind of meld it just a little bit. I came back over here and put some tan in the background. Where did I put it? I think way back there, it's hard to see, but I did put some strips of tan. Then I came over here and put some gray. So just kind of bouncing your eye around. But now do you see how that when I did these, these sand dunes where the oak sea oats are going to be done, you can now see that those sharp lines that I had between that fabric and this fabric have now been subdued because the fencing is over them. See that? So these are all the little tricks you do. Just remember blocking in color. You would do the same thing if you were painting and we are painting with fabric. And don't forget, Oh, thank you. And it's going to, the fencing is going to be so much better once we get the, the thread painting. And I want to take and put the wire on the fence. I'm thinking of taking a very thick, dark thread and doing it by hand so that you really see it like it's a piece of thick wire to hold that fencing together. So we've just begun, but now 
we have all the colors blocked. Like right here, I wanted the peach, the peachy orange in this to fade to a lighter orange. Well, right now, you know, unless you had a zillion different fabrics, there's a sharp line there. Don't worry. Between the thread and between the ink tints, we'll blend it in, and I think you'll like it. Okay, so now I have all the different layers, and I'm going to... Now, you might be wondering, when are you going to put the cheesecloth on the waves? Not anytime soon. That'll probably be one of the last things that I do. Hi, Melanie. Oh, how nice. And there was a, um, a lady last week. I saw another new member. I've forgotten her name, Ralph. And I'm really sorry that I missed saying hi to her. Thank goodness. I think, oh, hi, Jody. I think y'all would agree. Thank goodness we have Marsha because she makes sure to make everybody feel welcome. And she's our, like I say, our hostess with the mostest. So, oh, yes, that's what, that's what it is. Because can you imagine how many tiny slivers of fabric you would have to use to blend it all in yourself? Oh, I forgot to bring something down I meant to bring. I got a magazine when I was at the sewing retreat. And it's called Quilt Mania. And in it was a quilt a woman made to honor her friend. It had seven millimeter um, hexagons. Now, seven millimeter is probably not even a half inch. I, I don't even think it's maybe close to a half inch. And in this quilt, I'll make sure to show you Sunday. There are 10,500 um, hexagons. So that's crazy. <laughs> now, Mark's computer just froze up. So it might, not, it might not be able to let me catch up on everything. But, oh, that is just, ah, that's a sweet guy. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring you to look at this quilt. I was going to sew. The problem is I forgot to bring down my invisible thread that before I can do, before I even want to do thread painting, I want to take and um, zigzag invisible thread. I'll probably, except for one color blue on here, I'll use the clear. And I want to first zigzag everything down because there's nothing worse than going on with thread painting and realize you've accidentally flipped over a piece of fabric and sewn it down. Because then when you try to take the stitches out of it, it will shred. So we, you, there is a process and an order for this, okay? So let me bring you over here, and then I'm going to show you what threads I am planning to use. So here we go. Now, you know about the invisible threads. I love YLI. I love superior threads. Um, I'm even going to try a Coates and Clark brand. So let me show you something really quickly first. When I went to do the, the fence, I said, okay, all of this I tucked under, so none of this is raw edge. Even up here, none of this, only these little strips I had left over for, that I put on the clouds to try to blend this blue to this blue. And um, only those little strips are raw. But every, even these clouds right here, these are tucked under. And all of this in the waters tucked under. Now, when it came time to make the fence, I had to think about it. And I used a dark, nubbly brown for the post that are, the, fence, the fences are attached to. And then I, um, let me turn one more light on just to see if it will help, at least for a moment. Okay, here we go. Now, 
Then I took fabric and I put it, I said, I need fusible for these posts. I need fusible. And let me, I want to show you just how narrow they are. All right, let me see. I'm eventually going to do this anyway, but let me see if I can take, let me put my glasses on, take the marker here and outline the edges because I'm going to either do it with thread or ink tints anyway. But if you can see, these are very narrow strips. And so can you see now, once I've outlined them, it's much easier to see. And I thought, I am not going to take those and tuck it under. And I think that actually it looks better with it being, um, I, I think it looks better with it being raw edge because it makes those boards, because remember with sand fencing, it's very cheap, thin slats of wood wired together. So I think it looks, looks even better having it raw. And this one's my favorite side because I thought I want it to kind of, when you see sand fencing, it usually kind of looks knocked over or, you know, it's just not very sturdy stuff. And so I came around with this one and I put the dark one colors back in here and kept the light ones here. And, um, but anyway, I decided that use some fusible and put it on the back of fabrics. And I chose three different fabrics, this brown, I chose the gray, look, the gray here, and the tan. And then I had cut them this size and said, nope, that is too thick. So then I cut them even thinner. But the nice thing is once you lay them in place and once you then do the, you press them, the fusible holds them down good until I can take and do the zigzag coloration for them. So now, okay, let me make sure, hold on one second. I'm trying to keep the camera from getting light in it so that it won't dull down, but I may have to, let me see if turning this off. Yeah, I had to turn it off because some, if the light can get in the lens, it'll kind of dull it down. All right, so. I just wanted to show you how I did this. I put the, the, the what they are is their telephone post. And the, I'll go ahead and just show you. When you go in to do thread painting and when you start to, um, when you do thread painting, I know what I'm going to do. Hold on one second. When you go in to do thread painting and everything, um, and ink tents, and I also do permanent pens. So, but let me show you what it's going to do. Whoops, that's a little too bright. Okay, so what you're going to do, let me see if I can bring it over. There we go. What you're going to do is you're going to be with thread and pins and everything. You're going to come in here and make this. Let me turn it this way a little bit and then zoom in. Whoops, okay. You're going to come in here with this and you're going to just make this into a craggy old short bit of telephone pole. Okay? So between... Let me see. I want there. Whoops, you saw it for a moment. I blocked. Yeah, you can see it a little bit there. But that's that's where when you come in with thread, when you come in with ink tints and permanent pens, you can give all of that texture back. And then now I purposely chose, let me put this out of the way for now again come back out. I purposely chose, let me tilt this up, 
I purposely chose this fabric for the sand where the footprints are going to be. But I'm going to come in here with thread and I'm going to try to do some ovals that look even more like a footprint. Remember when I told you don't actually use five toes? That sand doesn't allow that. But I will come in and put, let me find my sand colors. This is, I went upstairs and raided my rack of threads to find sand colors. And here is what I have. Now, you might look at this and go, oh my goodness. Well, don't worry because I may not use all of them. But if I'm going to be sewing down here, I keep my thread upstairs. So, you know, I will decide between all of these what fabrics to you. Let me see, Becca Bradley. Oh, Becca Bradley, hi. Hi, hon. Oh, your daughter does taxes as a second job. Boy, I wish she lived near me. <laughs> but, oh, that is amazing. I, I think I would have to, I don't know, I would have to take a whole lot of calming medicine if I did taxes. <laughs> it just scares me. So a couple of these are, are li a little bit similar. And, but anyway... But these, you notice, one thing you'll notice when I show you the thread is I will do light, medium, and dark. Light, medium, and dark. Now, let me see. Okay. I want to bring this light up, but not get in the way. Let me see if I can bring it. Hold on just a second. But I want to show you these threads because it'll give you an idea and, and let people know. Let people know you're a thread painter or you're an art quilter. Let them know. And then a lot of times they'll save you threads. And that's wonderful. Okay, so these are the, the colors I brought down. Now, this one is also, it's almost like a peachy tan. That will be good up in the sunset, too. So now I'm going to move these out of the way. And some of these are good for the fencing. And also, don't forget, I've got to thread paint the dune grasses here. All right. So now let's move up to the water. And I'll show you what I chose to bring down for the water. And it doesn't mean I'm going to use all of this. But it will let me. I dropped one. Okay. All right. But this, and then for the darker water, for the medium water. Let's see. Here gives some nice, because you want dark, medium, and light of every color. Whoops. I'm trying to figure out where the best place is to move this. All right. Then grays because you have some gray tones and all the different, depending on what part of the water I'm doing, some of the water is going to be, have a little bit of the sunrise in it. And remember, mine's a sunrise because on the East Coast, we you can't look at the ocean and see a sunset. <laughs> The sun sets on the west, so in our oceans face east. But look at all of this. Now, I'm not saying for sure I'm going to use all of them, but I just looked and picked out everything I could think that might work. Oh, here's one more. All right, so I will choose between all of these. No matter what you do with thread painting, remember, have a dark, a light, and a medium. And that will give you, in fact, this darkest might be good up here where the, the strip of the ocean is very dark. 
So this is going to be, these are going to be the colors that I will use in the ocean and for my sky. Okay. This is a really pretty cool color for zoology. I wish I knew what they called this, but it's a, got the barest little bit of green. And I think that will be really good in the waves. So, all right. So that's that. Now I'm going to show you what I've got to work with, oh, and I love this. Notice the little flecks of metallic in it. That will be used in the wave area to give a little reflection, a little magic to the water. All right. Now, remember that color blocking is the fastest part of this. Now, I'll bring this down a little bit more and show you what I'm, I picked out for the sunset, okay? Here we go, all right? So I picked out some peaches because remember part of this sunrise is peachy, orange, some pinky, now this is these actually, this has some pe peach in it, but it's mostly pink. This is very peachy. I've got light and dark yellow, and I'm probably going to want to get a, a medium for that. But here I've got orange, and my dark of the sunrise is almost rusty orange. And so I've got light, medium, and dark except for the yellow. So I will find another yellow that's somewhere in between these two. But if you think of threes, you should be in pretty good shape. So now, now some of you are like, well, I don't have all of those threads. That's okay. I've been collecting for quite a while. And like I say, I ask people, hey, Save me. If you have any thread you don't want, I'll take it. I don't care what kind of thread it is. I don't care if it is um, embroidery thread. Now, this almost would, look at that. I think that would work for good medium for the yellow. So then it looks like I've got it all for that. So, but just remember, I've been collecting quite a while if you get to go to yard sales or if you hear of someone who is selling their embroidery thread collection, um, when I go to retreats, I go to the free, sale, free table and the for sale tables where people just want to clear out their room. So that's one of the reasons I have so much. I've been collecting it for a long time and I didn't pay full price for any of it because there are too many ways that you can um, get thread cheaper because thread, oh, thread can cost a lot. But as you see here, this is even kind of peeling up a little. So you can see that just this little bit of moving around. Let me turn this off now. It, any little bit of moving around can cause the um, fabric to want to peel up. So I do really, really need to get everything sewn down with invisible thread. In the bobbin, I use a neutral, a pale gray bobbin, and, and, and then the invisible thread in the top. And just gently put your, if you have the gloves, let me, whoops, sorry, sweetie. I think I rolled my chair on somebody's tail. i oh, sorry, baby. And, but if you have these gloves, anything like this that you can use, they make it so much easier. And I do this on my domestic. I, I have never tried it on a long arm, but... I put, I do like to use an embroidery, a darning foot, because you can see what you're doing better. But use what you have. If you have a zigzag foot, sometimes you can have a clear plastic zigzag foot. But I just go in and gently move 
while I zigzag everything down. And I think the only time I will change to a smoky invisible thread is for this little strip right here. But otherwise, everything can be done with the clear. And then after that, I'm, you know what? And I'm going to tell you something else I do. I will keep a piece of paper with this quilt and I'll write notes on it. Let me t tell you what kind of notes that I will write. I've been thinking about, um, do I draw in with pencil the dune grasses? I'm afraid to just start willy-nilly doing dune grasses. So I think I might take the time, you either use chalk or pencil, and kind of draw those in to make sure I have a pleasant arrangement. It's so much easier to draw them in than to take out stitches of those that you don't like where they are. But you can either leave your food feed dogs down, um, you can drop them down, but remember, then you have to set the stitch length or you can leave them up and just turn more. Don't do, move as much like this. Also, use a fine um, light gray bobbin thread because you don't want it to be so thick and strong that it keeps breaking the invisible thread. So I'm trying to give you these kind of little hints. Also, I'm thinking of... Like, how am I going to do thread painting up here in the sunrise? And what I may do is, have any of you heard of, well, if you get a piece of vinyl, you can get a piece of clear vinyl, lay over your work. And I do have clear vinyl. Lay it over it. Then you can use a dry erase marker, a dry erase marker. And try out, try out different ways of doing the water, of doing, of accenting the sunrise, the sky, all of it. Try it out before you do the sewing. But if you can lay the vinyl anywhere around, use dry erase marker and say, hmm, what would it do if I did this here or if I did that there? But I'm going to keep a pencil and paper handy with me for this because there's certain things like, am I going to do any seagulls? Where would I place the seagulls? A good place to place them is like on the top of the fence post here, right here. Because that or near the water's edge or a couple flying in the sky. So I like to keep notes because you think you're going to remember everything you will forget, but like write a note. When am I going to put, I'm going to lay some flat cheesecloth in the background here. When am I going to put that in? Do I want to do thread painting over it to hold it in place? So keep a notepad around or notebook and write down. If you want to try a different thread and you're sitting here and you're afraid you're going to forget, write it down to go upstairs and grab that thread. Like if I had written the invisible thread, I would have remembered to bring it down. So <laughs> just write that stuff on the list. And that way, as you work through, you'll be able to remember. And so what I'm, I'm trying to decide right now, whether I want to thread paint first or ink tents. And I'm not sure. And I'd like to ask y'all. Now, let me see. Um, Debbie, a river cruise is a smooth ride compared to the ocean. We didn't even notice. Oh, wow. Neat. Oh, what is Cheryl doing? Is Cheryl going to go on? Melanie's here. I know, Melanie. Mark would love to take, if he could afford a yacht, and take a trip around the world or around, you know, I don't know if he'd go across the whole ocean. But no, 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 no. I'm too afraid. I'm not going to sleep below the waterline. 
Oh, but Debbie, that trip sounds neat. Oh, neat. I love it, love it, love it. Oh, fantastic. Okay, and I will go back and read this. Can you use serger thread? You absolutely can. Now, one thing I... I'm not as fond of serger thread because it's rather dull and it can break a little more easy, easily. But um, you could absolutely use serger thread. You can even use it to wind your bobbins for your thread painting. Because I like to... Microtex... Let me write this down. Microtex needles are excellent for thread painting. Um... And then also, I like to use Microtex and Top Stitch needles. They are my favorite. And you might want to use at least a 14, 16 needle when you're doing thread painting. But anyway, do any of you who've, been do who've done this before, do you know whether you are would want to do the thread painting or the ink tents. Embroidery thread works great, Diana. A cruise ship? I'm even afraid of a cruise ship. Isn't that silly? Oh. Now, yes. Polly, I'm with you. When I watch PBS and they're showing the long boats going down the river and you can see shore from everywhere... I would get on that. Mark and I priced them, and it's like six thousand to nine thousand a person. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. But boy, would that be nice. They're thinking of putting some long ships on the Mississippi River. Now maybe I could afford something like that. But okay, I'm gonna come back to y'all now. I think I've talked about pretty much everything but i'd love to get your opinions because i've been thinking this through when i did the woodland waterfall i think i did some thread painting then did some ink tints i kind of went back and forth but let me see what y'all are saying um Oh, you picked out an image. That's wonderful. Wonderful, Denise. Um, with this beach one, I'm thinking I'd rather do the ink tents first because how it would be hard since it's such a smooth quilt. In my woodland waterfall, I had so many little pieces of fabric. With this, it's long expanses of fabric. So I've, I'm thinking I'm going to do some ink tints and then do the thread painting. But what do y'all think? Yeah, you like doing, you do the ink first. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. If, if this were a busier quilt, I might do it opposite. But before I do any ink tints, remember the first thing you do once you've done the color blocking with the fabric is use invisible thread, zigzag everything down. You will thank me for it. Do not put any backing or batting. Just the, you know how we do this on a foundation, just, just like it is, take and zigzag through the edges. Yep, I think I'm going to do that. Thank you for giving me your opinion. Um... So, you like to do thread paint, Michelle the quilter. So, I think if I had a busier quilt, I would probably do thread painting first and then do ink tents. Now, I'll do ink tents first, then I'll thread paint, but I can always come back and add some more ink tents because some, you keep going back and forth, and that's okay. But the one thing I want to tell you, when you do... When you do um, an art quilt like this, a landscape, it's take your time, go back and forth if you need to, but each stage you work at, do the very best job 
at that stage. And so I, especially with my uh, Woodland Waterfall, which I've now named Wooded Bliss, um, I did the very best with my color blocking that I could do and then moved on. If you do the best you can with each stage, then it's going to come together much easier. Now, this has got a different feeling, and I've got to be honest, because I don't, I'm not using bunches of little tiny fabrics. I wanted this one with the, just the way a beach is laid out. I think it would be too much to have a bunch of little tiny fabrics. And so it's a very different landscape than a woodland piece is or a meadow is. But with this one, I want it calm and serene. And so what I did is color blocked. And then I'm going to add the life with ink tints and color sketching, color thread painting, whatever you'd like to call it. Just be careful. Do not put too much lateral stress on your sewing machines. Your domestic machine is not made for that. A long arm is. And when it comes time to do some thread painting, I might switch to long arm. I'm just going to have to see. But um, let me go grab, it's, we're about done, but let me go grab my ink tents, pencils, and blocks to show you. Okay? Be right back. Not almost. Huh? I've got a couple minutes left. Oh. All righty. Here I go. Now, I'm missing one of my one. I'm missing one of my ink tents. I'm somewhere, somewhere are my ink tents blocks, and they're good. Because you can, whether you use water as a medium or aloe gel thinned with water or what I prefer, which is an acrylic gel medium or acrylic medium can be liquid too. If you have the ink tents blocks, it's dye concentrated into a block and that's good for doing large spaces. Then if you want more control, the ink tense pencils are what I use most of the time. And um, they are wonderful. Ink tense is a product made by a company in England called Derwent. And they're expensive. They didn't used to be this expensive, but they've gone up. Probably a lot of the cost has to do with shipping, international shipping. They are dye. These are met for fabrics. Now, let's say you don't have any of these and it's not in the budget right now. Use whatever you have. I have gotten these in the past, and these are pastels. And it's Fabric Fun Pastel Dye Sticks. Now, the one thing about this, I'll give you a warning, they tend to be a little bit oily. So what you're probably going to want to do is after you put the color on, lay a piece of cotton or paper towel or something and iron over it, which helps set the color and will get the excess oil off. But these are really good. You can use fabric markers. They are pretty cheap. Now I just bought, I just bought these and I'm so excited about these. They are the Sharpie. They're a Sharpie product, and they're called Stained. And what I love, I will be using these too. What I love about these is they have a brush-like tip, and it's soft, and you feel like you're using a paintbrush, but it's permanent, okay? All of my, any kind of 
stuff that I put on. These can go directly on the fabric. Um, my ink tents have to be spread on with a, a acrylic textile medium. Okay, I don't know if yet yeah, I have it here. There are different variety sizes of what? This is one, a chromograph textile medium. And this works great. If you just use water with ink tents, I want to warn you, it tends to spread. Um, and you really might not be happy with that. Instead of being able to paint in certain lines, it'll wick through the fabric. So if you use a gel medium, it keeps the color in place. Don't use too much gel medium or it's like putting a vinyl coating on it. So be careful. Sometimes people mix gel medium with a little bit of water. Some people go get aloe gel from Walmart. Whatever way you can do this, if you can save money, whatever, go for it. But there's so many products nowadays. Now, the one problem I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to use this unless I want a lot of color. The thing I love about the fabric pastels or ink tents more than markers, you can use them a, just a gentle touch like a watercolor. You know markers, when they go on, they go on bright. Now let me see if I have a scrap of fabric here. And if you want bold, bright colors, and that's what you're going to get with fabric markers. So there's no real way. See that? Now, I don't know if you can come behind it with a paintbrush. I don't think you can because they're permanent. But you can't really get the gentle um, mixing of colors like you can with ink tints. I dropped my bracelet there, yes. But anyway, so just be aware. The markers would be great if you've got an outline of a seagull and you want a nice, bold seagull. Otherwise, these pastels, fabric fun pastels, ink tents. And, you know, start if you want with a small pack of ink tents and... And see if you like it, because as long as you can mix colors and you're comfortable doing that, that's a great way. So next week, I will show you, I will have, I'll try to have most of it done, but I'll save a little part to show you how I work. Um, just to tell you real quick, I won't be here next week. Next week, I got the date, the days wrong uh, on Sunday, and I need to go back and put notes down. Sunday was just a mess. I just said, I walked away and said, got to take a break. C can't handle this. <laughs> and when it messed up, it was very disconcerting. But next Thursday and Friday, I'll be at Greenville, South Carolina, to see how my baby quilt did in the in the competition. I don't expect it to win anything. Keep my expectations low, and that way I'm just happy that it got in the show. I'm going to take pictures of all the quilts, if I possibly can, and give you a quilt show. For some of you who can't travel to it, I will give you a quilt show when I return. So, no Thursday night, but this Sunday, next Sunday, I'll be here because I try not to move any date unless I really have to. And the quilt show in Greenville, South Carolina, for those of you who can go to it, starts Thursday, runs through Saturday evening. I don't believe they have Sunday hours. I'm not sure. I think Sunday's a teardown day. But go on the Mancuso website, check it out. See if there is a place anywhere you can get discount tickets. And um, I, I just, I can't wait. So I'm very excited. Oh, I made sure to check the tracking on my quilt. And it got, it was, it got there. They tried to deliver it on Saturday. Well, they're not open on Easter, the day before Easter. And, but they went back Monday 
the U United States Postal Service went back Monday and it was accepted. And I made a copy just to prove, yes, I got it there in time. So, whew, that's a lot of work. I'm going to try, if I ever enter another one, to have it completely ready six months ahead of time. I don't know if that happens ever. But <laughs> All right. Well, it's time for me to go get some dinner. And are there any things you've said that I need? Whoops. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me see. I am terrible. Uh, Deb, are you going to the show? Yes, I'm going. Oh, you're glad. I'm, yes, I'm going to the show. I'm going to see my baby. And le yeah, let me tell you, Becca, I did not really buy any of those threads, I don't think, unless I bought them for 50 cents a spool. If you put the word out that you're going to be thread painting, people will give you stuff and it's great. Or you can buy somebody who just says, I'm clearing out my stash. You can buy it for just pennies on the dollar. So I got real lucky and uh, I love my thread. All right. Anything else? What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong with peanut butter? I, will, I love it. I love it. So next Thursday, I won't be here, but the next Thursday I will. We'll start back to work on this quilt. I can't wait. I am feeling good about this quilt. I'm feeling better than I normally do at the color block-in stage. So let's see where we're going to go from here. Okay. All right, and Polly, as soon as I can get this room clean, I want to have Polly over it so we can film her doing her weaving. And so as soon as, you know, I can get this mess cleaned up, I got to stay still a little bit first. So I've been a busy girl lately. All right, take good care of yourself. And, oh, just a little word between us gals. My daughter, Becky, you know, she's been dating her young man for some months now, and we're going to meet him for the first time Saturday. So I just thought I'd tell you, Becky's in a good place. Very happy girl. So take good care. Y'all are the best. Melton will be thinking of you your last six days of Ramadan. That sounds really wonderful. And everybody, take good care of yourself. Do something good just for you. Okay? Bye-bye. Keep on quilting. Bye-bye, guys. Whoops. I have to use my mouse for my laptop. All right. Bye-bye.